All right. What a great group. It's so fun, isn't it? When you see all the squares and the names and all that these squares represent, it's, it's, that's the good side of, of Zoom. So, all right. I'm just looking again. We'll probably have some more folks joining us. But why don't we go ahead and get started? I want to honor those of you that were here on time. So thank you. Hi, my name is Nancy Schneider, and I'm currently serving as Development Director for Groundwork Jacksonville. And it is on behalf of that organization that, again, I thank you for making tonight um, part of your schedule um, to be here and to hear an update on the Emerald Trail and the creek restoration work and all the things that Groundwork is doing to hear directly from our CEO, Kay E. House. Now, before I turn the controls over to Kay, um, just a couple of tips to help you maximize our time together tonight. Um, following her presentation, we will have an interactive Q&A session, and you can get our attention probably about three ways. One is old fashioned. You can just wave your hand and we'll, we'll spot you. Um, there's also a raise your hand feature in the Zoom platform. Sometimes it varies depending on which version um, you're accessing. But if you wanna use that, please feel free to do it. The third way is to type your question in the chat feature. And you can send your question um, to the group at large and you can also send it to me directly. And you would use the drop down menu and you would send it to Groundworks account. That's the account that I'm monitoring this evening. You can also use the chat box if something comes up that you think you'd like some follow up on beyond this evening, if there's something else. And that could even be something like requesting a tour. So the chat box is a great way to communicate with us this evening. My final note before I turn this over to Kay is again, just a reminder that we are recording and that this recording will be shared with other supporters and friends of Groundwork Jacksonville um, that could not be here, but they very much want to hear from Kay. And we know that you want to hear from Kay too. So I no further delay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the screen controls over to her. So, Kay. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna share an update on the Emerald Trail project as Nancy said. The big picture though, is that 40% of the project is underway in just four years. And I know that is because of Groundwork Jacksonville. I don't like to brag, but I'm telling you, without Groundwork Jacksonville, we wouldn't be this far ahead. I also know that much of our success is because we brought money to the project and why we are able to lead this project. So thank you for sharing your treasure with us. Together, we are doing very good work. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. So Groundwork Jacksonville intends to use the Emerald Trail to promote environmental, economic, and social well-being. That is what we really care about. So I'm happy to report that Groundwork Jacksonville has secured $20 million so far for the project. And our 20 million has leveraged 208 million in public dollars, not too shabby, 10% versus 90%. Our role, our unique ability to focus and dig in and to provide consistency is the difference between, you know, putting in 30 miles of sidewalk versus 30 miles of linear parks and multi-use trails for generations to enjoy. Projects of this scope require functioning private-public partnerships. Your investment in the private portion of this partnership has ensured that beauty and function are equally considered. You've also provided what we call grit, the determination to actually complete the project, facing down whatever barriers present themselves. You've got nonprofit entrepreneurs and government bureaucrats, so it's not always smooth sailing working together, but it is rewarding. So we're going to be cutting the ribbon of the first trail segment on January 17th. It's taken longer than we thought it would to be completed, but it will be completed in December. And so this just shows you, you know, what it looked like before we got started. And then this is how we are developing green space. And unfortunately this truck was in the way, so we couldn't show you the Park Street Bridge. And then you can see what it's gonna look like. It's really coming along nicely, but the, the Park Street Bridge is, 
um, a major part of what still needs to be done. And then this is just showing you um, how we're taking a five lane road eventually down to two travel lanes and you can see that happening right here. So th there's a planted median that's coming and it's down to two travel lanes versus five, adding so much green space. So this project in 1.3 miles is adding six acres of green space and 166 trees. And additionally, water's being directed to bioswales and bioplanters that will absorb and clean more than 3,200 cubic feet of stormwater runoff. So that's how we're enhancing the environment. So this is what it looked like before. And this is the Lift Every Voice and Sing Park coming to fruition. So they recently moved a shotgun house. You can see that it needs some love, uh, but it will be saved, which is nice. And I don't know if you've driven down Lee Street, but this is incredibly um, eye-catching. It's going to be a beautiful space with the trail right next to it. And then this is the pond that we are turning into a water feature. And so this is what it will look like, but this is the deck starting to come to life. It's really pretty amazing to watch. And then we're gonna come in and do a living shoreline. So we're gonna, it's gonna be a really, really nice place for people to swing, sit, read, gather. And then this is the um, Florida Dwight Park. It was a sad little park. Um, the Parks Department has invested um, new playground equipment, new basketball court. You can see some of that down here. And then all the, the, the irrigation is going to start going in within the next week or so, and then we'll start seeing the green stuff going in. And then we see the um, painted crosswalks coming to life. This is at the S-Line Rail Trail Connection. This is along Beaver Street. And then these are some of the signs that you're gonna see along the trail that we are, um, again, honoring the history of neighborhoods through signage and then also talking about the environmental enhancements we're making and um, also honoring the donors that provided funds for the trail segment. So this is Dolores Bar Weaver. These are um, Patrick and Patrick. And then this is a teaser because we do have a presenting investor and this is a um, three-dimensional sign and we'll be making that major announcement in a couple of weeks, three weeks maybe. So stay tuned for that. So our McCoy's Creek project, as you know, was our first design project and um, again, Groundwork Jacksonville totally changed how the city was gonna do this project. They were gonna take this part of the project, close a road and let it flood, and then widen it down here. And so this is one of the things I'm most proud of, how much we've influenced this project to turn it into a natural stream. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. This part of the project is under construction between I-95 and King Street, and I'm gonna show you some of those. It will be completed in a year. This, the branches project or the creek's headwaters is not in the city scope. So Groundwork Jacksonville took that project on and we have secured $10.3 million for construction and it will be under construction probably by April of next year. And then the outfall, which is buried underground currently, um, the city has awarded um, a contract and that should be under construction soon. And then this is this section will still need to be, the design will still need to be completed. So this is really moving along. And I think within three years, it's it will be com totally completed. So I don't know if you guys get excited about creek meanders, but I really get excited about them. Um, so this is when, you know, construction's ongoing and they, the trees they took down, they actually used uh, the trees to build this, I forget what it's called, but it's it's where they they make a wall using tree remains and then they plant it and that helps the helps the plants get established. Eventually this gets absorbed, but then you're going to have um, 
a living area here. But look and look at the progress we're making. And you see that meander? I mean, you guys, it's going to be so awesome. So awesome. So this is also part of the creek where, you know, creek construction is really, really ugly before it's pretty. And so this is a retention pond next to the creek that we were able to actually redevelop so that the residents have something really nice that they can utilize and, and, and get a real good taste for what's coming. And so in this case, you're seeing a living shoreline. When they redeveloped the pond, they found a, um, a van from the 1960s was, bare, was in the water, but there were no bodies. So that was a good thing because residents have told us they, they kept saying they thought we would find bodies in the creek, but so far we have not encountered any bodies. <laughs> What's really cool about this project is that most retention ponds are connected to creeks with a pipe. So nothing gets cleaned coming out of the retention pond any cleaner. In this case, the water's traveling under this boardwalk on the top right. And then it's going through all of this green infrastructure and also a step pool channel that's being developed as part of this creek construction. So it gets a whole lot cleaner before it gets to the actual creek. So Hogan Street, our segment segment number two is at 60% design completion and will be under construction no later than mid next year and maybe sooner. And then Hogan's Creek Restoration, um, the 30% design is complete. We've started the full design and that will be done by the end of 2025. You may have heard that Groundwork Jacksonville secured um, a private foundation grant and a federal grant totaling 8.6 million to get this design finished. And again, Hogan's Creek would not even be a project if groundwork hadn't kept pushing to, to, to make it start happening now. Um, when we first went to the city, they said no. And so then I went and got a grant and went back to the city and said, okay, we have a grant. So can we get started? And they said, yes. So it really, you know, we bring persistence and tenacity to the project. And then segment number three is the Riverside segment. It's gonna go from Ram up to Memorial Park. That is being presented by the Rotary, Rotary Clubs. And then it's going underneath the Fuller Warren. The city has that project under construction now. There's gonna be a skateboard park as well as the trail. And then we have just, we just kicked off the design project for the rest of it, which goes through Riverside, connects to an elementary school, and then we'll connect to the McCoy's Creek project. And that project is our first under the JTA partnership. And then I just wanted to highlight some of our community building work. Um, so, we always get asked, you're building this world renowned trail system. How are you going to maintain it? Because the city doesn't do maintenance well. So we have come up with what we think is an incredible way to help the city maintain the trail. And that is that we have a training program where we hire folks that live in the urban neighborhoods next to the trail, train and certify them in horticulture and high level landscape maintenance. And then we hire them as well as if we're not ready to hire all of them, then we have private employers hiring folks. And so we've hired our first two Emerald Trail stewards. Um, just yesterday, our Emerald, Emerald Trail stewardship manager started. Um, and so we are going to be entering into an agreement with the city laying out who's going to do what in terms of maintenance. But we have agreed to take care of all of the green infrastructure along the trail to make sure the beautiful part of the trail stays beautiful. And then the other thing we're doing is that we have partnered with the North Riverside neighborhood to start a home repair program. And Groundwork Jacksonville secured $1.4 million to repair 46 homes. And this is one of the homes that has been repaired. It's got a new roof. And then we're also adding downspouts and rain gardens to help with um, flooding. And we're about... By the end of the year, we'll have done about 23 homes and then next year we'll, we'll finish the other 23 homes. So with the segments getting completed, we now also need to start considering activation and operations as well as maintenance. So there's a lot, a lot to be figuring out. 
Future support for groundwork is largely going to be about supporting the people that will drive those programs and related initiatives. So, you know, unrestricted funds or operations funds are the some of the most difficult funds to get. And that's what our Trailblazer program is really all about. Um, so in the remaining weeks before the trail opens to the public, we are available to give tours of the Villa Link and the restoration of McCoy's Creek. Um, we're also open for further conversations. And as you may have heard, we're going to be celebrating our donors on November 7th. So I don't know if Nancy wants to talk about that now or if we should do questions now. Well, you have a question. So let's get, it's from David, um, said segment three is in the design phase. How long does the design phase usually take? So groundwork is, um, we hired the, the, the firm to do the planning design and engineering um, study, as well as a 30% design, and that will take a year. So we'll be finished with that in a year. Um, that's where you have the most public involvement, because that's when you're coming up with your conceptual design. So by the end of that, people will know what it's going to look like. And then it's probably another six months to finish that design. So we expect it to be under construction in 2025. The, you know, I, I think it's fascinating, um, Kay, the whole concept and Gloria too, about part of the design is to hear from the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I think it might be interesting. Of course, we've heard it, you know, we know it, we live it. But even when you mentioned we're just starting now with Riverside. So do you want to touch on some of, you know, what that looks like for us when we just start on, on a segment? Well, just starting means we had a kickoff meeting with our uh, design engineering firm, as well as um, the city folks and the JTA folks who are going to be part of our design committee. And then we are forming, um, we're going to be doing a number of different engagements with the community. So one is that we're forming a group of Riverside Avenue stakeholders. So that part from Ram to Memorial Park will be represented. So it'll be Ram folks, Cummer, the Garden Club, Memorial Park, um, Riverdale Inn, and any of those owners. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is meet and then walk that section so we can hear from them, you know, what their concerns are, um, what they'd like to see, so and have our design um, firm hear that as well. So that's step one for that. And then we are, um, the Riverside Link is going down an alleyway in Riverside. And so you've got homeowners, you know, on both sides of that alley that abut that alley. And that is a much closer to home kind of thing, right? When it's kind of right in your backyard. And so we'll, we're going to be doing um, much, I mean, a lot of engagement there in terms of what do they personally want to see? What are their concerns? What do they personally want to see? Because we have to make sure it works for those homeowners. And then we're going to be doing, uh, you know, bigger community meetings, right? So anybody in Riverside or anybody else that wants to come gets to weigh in and just gather a lot of feedback that goes into what that design ultimately looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think another part related to this, when you talk about weighing in, that it really does matter and it's impacted other decisions that ground hurt work has made. And Kay, I love the story about the La Villa link. And I just, uh, maybe our group would find that interesting about how did the La Villa link come to be? And there's, it was the um, the input from the neighbors that really kind of charted the course. So maybe you yeah. could tell that story. So we formed a steering committee to, um, to guide the Emerald Trail master planning process. And residents from five urban neighborhoods were on that steering committee. And the initial, and we hired the PATH Foundation out of Atlanta, who now have, gosh, probably 30 years in trail planning, design, and construction. They had a lot to do with the Atlanta Beltline uh, to help us put together that master plan. And so the initial draft 
did not include the La Villa link. And the feedback we got from the folks living in Durkeeville and Newtown is we want a direct connection to downtown. And we think, you know, going this way would be a good idea. And so without their involvement, we would not have the La Villa link, which when you think about it, um, it goes right by the convention center, um, is a block away from JTA's Regional Transportation Center so people can walk and bike and catch mass transit. Vescor had just put up three new apartment complexes. So you have ready-made trail users. Um, you know, it connects to a park. It, it absolutely connects people in a way that 95 divided them. So, and then it also connects to the existing S-Line rail trail. So you immediately have an, you know, an added to an existing trail. So, Today, I can't imagine not having that segment. So more input gets better outcomes. Yeah, I love that story because that just uh, that's taking a principle that we have in theory and, and making it real and, and just the impact that people can have. I think you've often said about we, we bring everyone to the table, the decision making table and that, that, that is something I know I've always respected about the organization. So that's a great illustration. Yeah. So, so our, our Hogan's Creek Task Force has, you know, we've got the Cathedral District, Springfield, Eastside. All three of those neighborhoods are represented. We have developers, JEA, the Water Management District, the city. Um, I can't remember everybody. But afterwards, our... Creek design firm a project manager came up to me and said, okay, this is not how it typically works. There's, we never do projects where you have all these different groups sitting around the table working together. And I said, welcome to Groundwork Jacksonville. <laughs> because I love, you know, that's, that's what we love. We'd love bringing all those folks together and having, you know, to have a developer sitting there going, I think we own that property that we want to acquire for the creek and wants to work with us to do that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's fun stuff. You know, the other thing I'd love to talk about a little bit is the- Oh, wait, Guillermo's reminding me that UF Health and the Jaguars are also on, on the Hogan's Creek Task Force. Yeah. Yeah, it, it will see the diversity of voices. We love it. That's right. I wondered if um, you could talk a little bit about the La Villa link, since that's that's the first segment that's going to be opening. Um, there's some very special features about it, and you highlighted in your slides, you were able to show about um, the bridge and just the uh, impact that we've already had by taking five lanes and, and bringing lots of um, opportunity for, you know, greenscape, you know, changing just the way it looks. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought maybe you could give everybody just a preview about that feature that's going to be on the on the bridge and um, that that's going to that's going to be one of those big um, what I just marks or just gathering places, um, something that's really going to be a benefit to people right away. Yeah, and I'm gonna while I'm doing that, I'm gonna see if I can pull a picture up of that. Um, so the Park Street Bridge, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it connects Brooklyn um, into La Villa, right, and stops at the convention center. And um, it is it was a four lane divided bridge, four lanes of traffic, and we're taking half of that is totally for trail, and two way car traffic has been moved over to the other side. Um, so that you're talking about this really incredibly safe area. And on the top of it is going to be a seated lit shade structure. So I, it's going to be a major gathering space for people, right? We're also, we have engaged um, an artist who is adept at community engagement, who's doing outreach um, because we want the communities that we're going, the trails going through to really conceptualize the art, because we want the art to really um, honor the history and culture of those neighborhoods. And so we're going to be, they're going to be choosing from three different artist concepts and the artist concepts are going to be based on what the community has said, has shared with them. And then we're going to mural the walls. So it'll be our first 
major piece of public art. And we're going to try our best to have it done by the ribbon cutting. But that all depends on if the contractors get out in time. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find a picture of that, though. One of the, the fun things about the La Villa link, we've been down to walk it quite a bit, as you can imagine, is right there from the Park Street Bridge. Um, if you go towards Riverside, really very quickly, you can take advantage of the other connections that are part of Brooklyn and get over to the Riverwalk really very quickly. Uh, and somebody was saying when we were out walking and um, asking us questions, they said, oh, you mean I could get like my coffee and pastry at Fresh Market and then hit the trail and go all the way up to the S line. And we were like, yes, that's exactly what you could do. And so it was exciting just to see people start starting to make those connections. And even some of those folks were saying they had heard about the S line, but they had never been on it. And so that's another kind of perk of the La Villa link being the first segment is it's taking something that was already existing, this S-Line trail, which has tremendous benefits, um, but it, it was out there kind of disconnected. And so by connecting it, we're, you know, we're able to kind of, um, not kind of, very much so expand um, uh, someone's experience out in the community. So that it's it's just an exciting thing to see. So yes, you could get your coffee or pastry there at Fresh Market or somewhere near there. You could leave the Y and cross and then join up on the trail and take it all the way up to the S line. Um, and it's exciting too, to see businesses kind of around the S line, um, around the area like Myrtle Avenue area. Uh, we're having an event there tomorrow night um, with our members. Um, we're having a member meetup. Um, my colleague Julia is hosting it and we're going to be at Myrtle Ave Avenue Brewing and just talking, bringing people down into the community and to, to kind of get up and close and personal um, to see the trail. Let me show, let me show two quick slides of the Park Street Bridge. Yeah. So this is, you can see that it was a divided four lane highway and we're taking the whole left side. This is in the Brooklyn area, but you can see the amazing transformation that it's making. And if you're out there now, you can see it coming to life. Not pretty yet, but it's coming to life. And then again, at the top, this is where we're, have, we're gonna have this lit shade structure. So you can imagine gatherings happening here for sure. Mm -hmm. And if you go, as Kay often says, especially with creek work, that this stuff gets messy before it gets pretty. Um, but if you go up there now and just drive over and quickly, you can see all the construction in process. So um, it is messy, but there's a lot of promise in it. Um, let's see. I um, We did have a question regarding safety, which is absolutely, we understand that. Um, so Kay, do we want to talk a little bit about um, public safety and some of the factors that are being considered at this stage of the project? So at this stage, we are adding lighting to make sure it's lit. Um, what studies are showing is that trails actually make areas safer because you have more eyes on the ground. But we are also going to be looking at, this is what we're going to start getting into real operations and planning now, and, and safety is one of those. Um, so we're going to look at things like a GIS grid system to make sure no matter where you are, if you have your phone, people can find you. Um, we'll talk to JSO. You know, the, the La Villa link goes right by JSO's, well, Nancy calls it the equestrian center, but it's their horse and canine uh, facility. I kind of like equestrian center, but the real equestrian center might not like us calling it that. Um, so, so yeah, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, we also have found um, a lot of fear comes from just the unknown. You know, if you haven't been spent any time in, in these neighborhoods and we've, we've never had any issues. Now that doesn't mean I would go out there by myself at night, but I live in Riverside and I'm not walking by myself at night in Riverside either, you know? So, um, so yes, I think it is a concern that we have to address and that, and we will. All right, we have another question. Um, what is the plan for making road crossing safer on the trail? Any chance of getting something similar to the crosswalk to the Cummer 
that actually stops traffic. So we're doing painted crosswalks so people know know it. We're also doing um, those, whatchamacallits, you know, where they flash and tell, tell the car to stop. But on the little bit of link, we have um, bike ped signals. So they'll actually, you know, there's, they'll actually like turn, turn to, so bikes can keep going and cars will stop because, because they're, when you're riding your bike, it'll, knows you're coming. Um, we're also having, um, putting in a light so that if you're going down the trail and you know, there's one way rows where you could go left, there's going to be, you can't go left when the bikes are going. So we are looking at all of that. There are some cases where, so in the alleyways, for example, we're going to make the trail user the prominent. So cars will have to stop, not the trail users. So we're really looking at all of the different ways that we can make sure it's safe for trail users. I am not the expert on that though. So I don't know how well that sounded. Okay. No, but it's, yeah, go ahead. I think there'll be some rectangular rapid flashing beacons. That's it. That's the, yes. Yeah. Yes. But I do like the idea of, you know, having to stop for the trail user. And I think that the city, you know, while without us, the city wouldn't have done a lot of the things we're doing, like ro major road diets and all that sort of thing. They also, their traffic engineer is very pedestrian and bike friendly, and he's really starting to look at what he can do um, again, to make it safer and to have through conditions for trail users. Mm -hmm. You all are asking wonderful questions. So we, we still definitely have some time. So if anybody, anything else, or if you want to explore some of these a little bit, um, how is overall funding progress going for all the remaining segments? Any concerns? Well, Jacksonville is not the easiest place to raise money. Um, you know, if you look at other trail cities, they have major corporate headquarters like Cox Media in Atlanta or um, Coca-Cola. And then you also have major foundations in other cities that have given tens and tens of millions of dollars to trails. So we don't have that. So we're trying to get more creative. Um, so a couple of things we God, there's some things happening I can't say yet, but we have some good news coming. We're going to be getting our first seven figure gift. Um, and we're uh, so we've got right now we're looking to raise five million over the next two years. And we are at two point eight million. So um, and we know how we want to get to the five point three million. <laughs> Um, we're going to be submitting a uh, grant application to the Cox Foundation because they are interested, they're, they're interested in trails outside of Atlanta, but that have a Cox presence, you know, a Cox business. Um, I don't know how much I can say. We are, we are taking the players, PGA tour people on a tour in a couple of weeks they are interested in the project. So, um, you know, Swisher recently gave us a half a million dollars. On November 7th, we're going to be announcing another major gift. And then after that, another major gift. So I would say things are picking up. Things are picking up. And we really believe that once this first trail segment is open and people can see it, the momentum will build even more. So I think we're feeling pretty good. Don't you think too, Kay, you alluded earlier in your opening remarks about um, unrestricted money to, to help us with the, the people that drive the programs and the yeah. initiative. So and part, of that, part of that 5.3 million is a percentage of that for operations. So we're trying to get smarter about that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. All right. 
All right. So last call here. We we still have time. We're doing great. And you all get A plus. Your questions are wonderful. Very thoughtful. David, are you with Rotary? Yes, sorry about that. We love Rotary. Um, I I'm just, I just one more question. Sorry to monopolize the questions here, but um, is there, is there any type of like um, master like schedule thing that we can? Because uh, our our goal is really just to keep our clubs because it's more than just the Rotary Club of Jacksonville. There's a number of others that are involved with helping us with funding for this for our segment. So, is there any type of like without? And I understand you can't share stuff that you don't want to share yet. That's not public. We get it, but. Is there anything that has like a, a, a master plan or master map of, and I, and I know things change, but segment by segment is to say, this is in design, this is in construction, this is anticipated, just something that's really high level um, to the extent that you can share it. Um, it would be helpful to us in keeping our clubs updated and showing that, you know, look, last time we sent you this update, this was in design phase. Now this is the construction, this is being completed. Is there anything like that that, that can that you can share um, to the extent that you can to give us that would that would be helpful to us? We actually um, recently created a map. Um, do I have it? Is the question? Let me see where I put it <laughs> to see if that would work. Which shows um, kind of what's happening right now. You know what's in design, what's under construction. Does anybody have that? I don't know what I did with it. Anybody? I can try and find it, Kay. Trish recently did it. Oh, let's see. I don't know where I put it though, or what I used it for. Um, yes, David, we can provide some. We can provide something like that. That'd be great. Yeah. And and just as a as a final comment for me, I think this this meeting was fabulous. And I think that oh, the fact you. that you took that you guys take the time to do this, this really puts gives us the latest and greatest of what's going on. So I don't know if you guys are are, are gonna be doing this regularly, but this this is a tremendous help to us for our communication inside our clubs to keep them going of with pro providing information. So if this is a quarterly thing or I, you know, I don't know how often you're going to do it, but if we get something like this, this is really good. Okay. That's really good to know. Thank you. Uh, Thank Kay, you. do you want me to try and share this map real quick? Oh, Trish. Yes, please. Let's see. We can see if it'll work or if Lord we need only to knows ask. what I'm going to be sharing. I got a bunch of windows open, but there <laughs> <Boy>. we go. <laughs> can you see it? Not yet. Yes, now we can. Okay. So, so you see the the yellow is what's constructed already. Um, so that's the shared use path across the Fuller Warren, and then part of the San Marco one. Um, orange is under construction, so that's the Lavilla Link and McCoy's Creek, and then the light green is what's currently in design. So it's quite a bit. Yeah. Is this, this this the same thing on the website that you have? Or am I? This is, I don't think this is on the website no, yet. It's it's okay. not on the website yet. We just okay. finished it. Um, we just updated it last week with, you know, all of these updates. Right. Now, would this be helpful or do you also? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, Nancy, we could just send this out to the group. Okay. Happy Thank you to do so. Yeah. Yeah. If I if I may uh, say, you may want to add a date on the map just to show. Uh, oh, the like date of the map. Yes. Just yeah, yes. just a timestamp. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great idea. Yeah, Trish, that's a really good idea. As of as of ten ten twenty twenty three. All right. 
Well, we're doing great. I'm showing 741. So we're well under our hour. Um, we don't have to be here for an hour. What's that? We don't have to stay. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. But um, so if yeah, any other questions that people have or requests, um, and if anything pops later this evening or tomorrow, just you, you know where to find us. And um, David, like your feedback, um, th that is really important to us and yeah. that, that will drive our, our planning and our decision making. So any question, any idea, um, you're, you're a large part, you know, we want to serve you. We want to figure this out about the best way to, to get the public engaged. And so your insight, your ideas, all of it, it all matters. Mm -hmm. So, um, please reach out anytime. Yeah. Let well, me, I'll Oh, sorry, David, go ahead. I was just going to say the key The key for us is just we have to keep feeding information to the people that are helping with the funding on this on our side. So that's what we feel the pressure on internally on our side is to keep people sit, the information is fresh. Mm -hmm. There's things going on. There aren't just people sitting in an office. The pictures of those construction of McCoy's mm -hmm. Creek, that's really, that's powerful. So mm -hmm. those types of things are good. Um, is can we get those? Can we get the slides that Kay that you had earlier? Yeah. Can we get that too? Yeah, we'll, we'll send it as a PDF with Great. the um, with the map. And then Great. I wanted to introduce Guillermo Simone to everybody because Guillermo is with Happen Associates, and they are um, the firm that the engineering firm that's designing Hogan's Creek. Yeah. Hey everyone. Guillermo. Nice to uh, nice to meet you. Nice to see you in Zoom. It is an incredibly complex project, you guys. <laughs> yeah. So just so just so you know, the creek currently is buried underneath the Arlington Expressway in a culvert and also <clears throat> buried underneath UF Health's parking lots. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, when you bury a creek, it causes flooding. So we have to unbury the creeks in both those locations to be able to reduce flooding. Um, so that involves the Florida Department of Transportation because the Arlington Expressway is theirs. Uh, our goal is that that we have to remove the culvert and make a bridge, right? So we can daylight the creek underneath it. So the FDOT, you know, like the higher up in government you go, the slower they are, right? So FDOT is state. If you know, they're like, it's not in our work plan. We have no money. And I'm like, we'll get you the money. We're going to get you the money. You're going to do the project. And so we did. We got six hundred thousand dollars in one of our grants that we're giving to the FDOT so they can do the planning, design, and engineering study. We're about to go under contract with them for that. And then I'm going to apply for a grant of four million to design it. And then I think this, I don't know, but we're going to make it happen. People are like, yes. no, you're not. Gonna, that's going to take forever. It's like, no, it's not. That project is going to be fully designed when our creek is fully designed. <laughs> we are going to make it all happen because you just have to, again, you have to just put in the work <clears throat> to right. get stuff to happen like you need it to happen. It's not rocket science. Yeah. It's relationships and tenacity. Yeah. And, and they really, uh, they, I mean, they recognize both FDOT as well as the city that that particular spot that Kay is describing is a problem and has been a problem for a long time. Uh, kind of the challenge is that today that road sees, I think the number was between 20 and 30,000 cars moving every day. So it's not so easy to shut down, um, but uh, but the need is there. And really Groundwork Jackson here is just providing the spark to make it happen. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. But that spark needs to become a fire. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. That's an image, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a safety kind of uh, <clears throat> word from Joanne Tredenick, who's part of our Zoom community tonight. She said about safety is I ride the S line and explore the La Villa Link area with some regularity and have never felt threatened. So that that's, that's a good kind of balance, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's actually there. And and out there, and I love it with some regularity. So mm -hmm. thank thank you, Joanne, for sharing that. Well, Joanne know, rides her bike a lot. Go ahead, Larry. You can't underestimate 
the lack of knowledge that so many people have about this area. They have never been in that part of town. And as we get people over there and they experience what it's really like, I think it'll be a great eye opener for many of them. Yeah. I think so too. Well, one tip I would have is if you've never been to, I, I say it all the time and people get tired of me talking about it, but the park that's part of the La Villa link, the Florida C. Dwight park, uh, and just the history there, it's right. Um, you go under, take the link and you go under 95 and, um, Kay mentioned it in her presentation, but the city is doing some upgrades there. Uh, a couple of times I've gone, I've, I've take people there and we'll get out and just sit and, and understand the history of Jacksonville a little bit, do a little history lesson. And I've, I've met residents and it just becomes more real to me. And, um, and to see the upgrades that have happened to this park because of the trail, um, very rewarding. So Florida Sea Dwight Park, if you, if you want to get out now and see something special about the La Villa Link, about the Emerald Trail, that's a good place to go. And one of the benefits, too, is they added parking. So easy, easy place to go. Easy to drive right up, um, get a place to park. There's some swings, equipment. And, and you might meet a neighbor, meet a new friend. So I, I'm always plugging that park because um, I think it's a very special place. And I would have never known about it if it weren't for the Emerald Trail. But also know it's been the lay down area. So there is a part of it that doesn't look good right now. In progress. You, you mentioned <laughs> things things get messy before they get beautiful. So that's yes. just, but it's a little bit of both. So you yes, yes, it is. It. Yes, yeah. it is. And I can't wait till the landscaping goes in there. It's going to be gorgeous and there, there's going to be this huge bioswale a, a big rain garden that when it's rained it definitely holds water you know so it's like hey this is going to work oh yeah the last time i was there um one of the churches because we have two churches or actually three churches around the park um a gentleman came over he was the senior pastor of one particular church and it's like what's happening you know so it was my privilege to explain a little bit about it and um anyway it was just a wonderful conversation and i've since stayed in contact with him and again met a new friend that i never would have met had it not been for that experience so um larry i just yeah I, what you were saying is true you just got to get out and, and get out there into the neighborhoods and um, avail yourself of that opportunity. So, so you know, there was a 30 acre park um, in Sugar Hill, which is very close to La Villa, that was decimated by I 95 going through it. Mm -hmm. So, I 95 did a lot of damage, you know, to, the, to that community. And part of what, you know, we're doing is make, you know, connecting people again. Um, but there's, there's really a dearth of green space over that way in, in dearth of parks. So, and then the city keeps giving away parkland to people. I keep saying, don't give away your parkland. Stop, stop. Now, what, so it's really interesting that we are, groundwork is now, so the city will send out a list to all these city folks about surplus property that they want to get rid of. And so they first ask everybody in the city if anybody wants to keep it or not. And so there was um, on segment three near I-10 where we're where our trail's going to go. There's a private property owner that wanted to close the road and take over the road, and the city was going to do it. And somehow we found out about it, and we're like, no, no. And so we we met with that property owner who said, we'll work with you, right? Like. We won't ask for that. We'll work with you. And actually, his property really floods. And I really like the city to buy it because it's right next to a really small tributary of McCoy's Creek. I, I digress. My point being, I then asked if we could get added to that list. So we are now on the city list that every time they want to get rid of a property and our trail project manager looks at every one and goes, okay, I think we should keep this. Okay, I think. And so we, we then go, We'd like you guys to keep this for the trail and they keep it. Yes. <laughs> you never know. You got to keep your eyes open all the time. All the time. <laughs> May I ask a question? Uh, we don't hear much about the S line. We see a long, long line at the top of that map. But not much discussion about it. Can you 
fill in some blanks. Yeah, so that was an abandoned CSX rail line. Right. Um, the city did the S line in the early 2000s. There's um, a part in the middle that they didn't do. So it's disconnected. That's segment number four that we're going to be doing. But it goes all the way up into at the to the Norwood Shopping Center. And so it's asphalt. Um, and so I'm really glad that you brought that up, Howard, because uh, what, what I just decided recently was unless we hire a design firm that, that can help us figure out what else has to happen, nothing's going to happen, right? You, you need a plan or else it just isn't going to get done. So um, we're looking at that now. So, so to get ready for the ribbon cutting, the city is removing dead trees. They're going to look at um, like, where is their soil erosion? They may do some reasphalting and do a green stripe instead of a yellow stripe. This is part of the Emerald Trail. But there's a whole, there's a lot of land out there that we can create special places and add more trees. But again, you have to have a design plan to make sure it happens. So that's our next thing that we're going to look at. So thank Howard, you for bringing that up. Howard, I recommend that you drive up to Evergreen Cemetery and park outside and take the S line down, walk down to 20th Street. It is beautiful. I know the S line. I grew up in that neighborhood. So I, okay. I know what oh. you're talking about very clearly. I'm just curious as to what you would do with it and how um, and where it fits in. Uh, the timeline of this project. Well, this is going to enable cyclists to be able to cycle from uh, the South Bank Riverwalk all the way to Evergreen Cemetery and back. Good. Give them a good 20 mile run. Yeah. So segment four, you know, we're, we're designing segment three now, and then we'll design segment four, which is that connection, you know, right. so the S line will be fully connected. And in the meantime, we're going to um, put together a scope of work to start on the southern part of the S line, which is State Street to Boulevard. It has an enormous um, historic significance to the city. Yeah. When you think back from uh, a train that ran through Panama Park and brought people downtown, uh, people actually commuted on that line I know. to work downtown from way up on the north side of the city. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, I know that I know that uh, part very well, and I'm glad to see something might may be done with it. Yeah, Good. um, I know. Don't you like? I wish we still had streetcars because <laughs> now we want them again. Yeah. Well, and we also um, one of the things that Groundwork did uh, went in 2016, 2017 was the Sugar Hill Mosaic. So mm. there's a beautiful 96 foot long mosaic underneath I-95 there, um, just parallel to 13th Street and west of Davis, North J Davis. It's beautiful. So Have you seen it, Howard? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. That really was our first piece of public art. So the murals mm -hmm. on the Park Street Bridge will be our second piece of public yeah. art. Sure. Uh, Nancy, do you want to actually talk about this November... Seven. Yes, I was just making sure I put something in the um, chat while you all were wrapping um, wrapping up. But yes, you know, originally um, we were hoping to open the trail um, and with some construction delays, we thought, well, we still want to have a party. And so we are planning on the evening of November 7th to have a trailblazer reception at the Ritz Theater right there in the heart of La Villa. And we're going to celebrate all of those, all of you who have gotten us to this point. Um, such a, an impressive group of donors, um, individuals, um, businesses, corporate donors, foundations, um, garden clubs, you know, people just coming together saying yes to the Emerald Trail. Um, invitations for this event are just going out this week. And as I mentioned in the, in the chat, um, if you represent a business or an, you know, an entity other than a, than a household, um, please reach out to me about the invitations. Um, we've done our best to include as many, but if there's any question about it at all, we'd, we'd love to, um, we can make sure you get that invitation to the right people. So um, we're really looking forward. It's a night where we as an organization wanna say thank you. 
um, people have been incredibly generous. And I, I think back and when this whole thing was just starting and it was just an idea, um, but it was an idea with a lot of passion and a real commitment for, for something great to happen here in Jacksonville. So we just want to get the group together and, and say thank you. And then also just cast the vision for, for what for what's ahead. So again, it's November 7th. It's an evening reception at the Ritz Theater in La Villa. And any question, like I say, invitations are going out this week. Uh, I think they went in the mail yesterday. Maybe Trish told me. Um, but if there's any question about that, if you just want to make mm -hmm. sure who's on the list, please reach out to me and we I will share that information with you and get the invitations still. If there's some that need to get out, we can make sure that the right people receive them. So Uh, we're excited to do that at the Ritz Theater. I don't know if that's one of those things too, that if, if you've never been, uh, just it's a night where you're not only going to be in community and, and celebrate with your colleagues and peers, but there's also, there's art, um, great displays, things to learn um, about our community as well. So I think it promises just to be a fun night, um, a meaningful night, and, and we'd love to have you join us. All right. All right. Let's see. Any other? And you know what? Um, last pitch too. Um, you know, the question about we have donors and then we have members and some of our donors are members. You know, there's a little bit of an overlap, but um, the membership program is a way for us to um, it's, it's a commitment of $10 a month and it allows anybody with a variety of, of abilities to come on board and to stand with us and to make this thing happen. Um, typically, the members are also very interested in hands-on volunteering. Um, we've noticed that a large percentage of them are very interested in the, the, in the environmental aspects of this work. Um, and they very much want to be in community. You know, they're, they're looking to be with other like-minded people. So that thus we have these member meetups and we haven't done one in more than a year. So we're relaunching this community. And so if you ever see anything and, and want to join us, we'd love to have you. And again, we're going to be over at Myrtle Avenue Brewing tomorrow evening. Um, we're playing a little trail trivia and, and just enjoying one another's company. So um, if you want any information on the member program, and you, again, you, you, anybody's welcome to come to these member meetups. So um, we typically send out some emails in advance. And, and if you're not receiving emails about those and would like to, um, again, let me know. We'll, we'll make that happen. So, all right. Um, well, Kay, we're at 7.59. Time's gone by really fast. And um, I think you've shared a lot. I loved all the questions and the positive feedback and some good insight. Any closing words for us? Oh, Lord. Um, thank you. Seriously, thank you. Because without you guys, we would not be where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, the reason we are able to lead this project is because we bring money to the table. Money talks. It's just the reality of the situation. So um, think about us if you'd like to part with some of your treasure. Um, but I really feel I'm, I'm really proud of the work we're doing. We're doing not only are we doing good work, but we're making great progress. So just thank you. And hope to see you on November 7th. Yeah. Lift a glass. Yeah. So thank you um, as well. We echo those sentiments and um, you're welcome to hang out a little bit longer or you're welcome to get on to the next thing in your evening. And uh, again, anything that comes up, drop us an email. Let us know how we can serve. And um, we're excited. This has been a lot of fun. I, I just really have enjoyed so um, when we talk about the gift of your time, it truly has been a gift. So thank you so much.